So we're totally off record. We don't even be formal or anything, but. Well, I was going to be formal. I'm not very formal anyways. I know you're not. <laughs> I know. It's that off the cuff shooting from the hip style that all the kids like these days on the YouTube. <laughs> but anyway, so we're going to put this thing back together. It's really not going to take that long. They're very, very simple, but I wanted to measure this, the O-ring that's in here that I think a lot of people maybe just miss when they're rebuilding these things. We did not put new bearings in this thing. Honestly, they don't really go bad ever. Like you can replace them, but- It's a low uh, mileage bike too. Well, it's a low mileage bike. They're just not really gonna go bad, but this, so the shaft comes through here. There's a seal that sits on here, like this little guide here. It's kind of a whatever, spacer guide thing. And there is an O-ring that sits on the inside of here to keep oil from leaking into the hub. There's also an external seal, which we'll be putting in here in a minute. But, so there's two seals through this thing, which seems kind of ridiculous, but that's just the way Honda did it. Instead of just having one seal, they put a seal that's a little bit larger, a spacer, and then also this O-ring in here. So I just want to measure what the O-ring is. The outside diameter of the said O-ring is going to be like roughly 20 millimeters. Inside diameter is going to be, looks like 17 millimeters roughly. And the actual O-ring thickness is going to be right about, say like 1.5, 1.6, 1.7. It's right around there. So. You can get your numbers off of that. I don't know what that cross references to. I don't know if this is a really silly size over and nothing else uses. Couldn't tell you, but um, we're gonna grab, we got new seals here and we got the other new seal over here. Right? right here. Oh my God, snuck it right up on me. So nothing too crazy here. Just a set of new seals and rebuild it back together. We are gonna put this back together with Allen bolts because I'm putting the whole bike together with Allen bolts because I, as somebody mentioned earlier in one of the early videos, they are not number three Phillips screws. He's technically correct, but for the most part, it doesn't really matter for, because he referenced them being JIS, which is a Japanese industrial standard of the Phillips style, like cross-headed screw. Um, there's a lot of different versions of that. You also see like reed prints, which is a pointier version and shit like that. But for the most part, for the JIS versus the American Phillips style, large diameter cross-headed screw. The difference is really pretty minimal on that size. So on the smaller sizes, it becomes more important to get the correct uh, screwdriver for the JIS standard. But for the larger number three size, or the whatever the JIS equivalent number is, I remember it's like Keith, whatever, that it's less important only simply because the, it's, the difference in the actual geometry doesn't cause it to cam out. So a Phillips head screw is designed originally, they were developed by the Ford Corporation for the production line of the Model A or the Model T, I don't remember exactly off the top of my head, but they were designed so that when you applied a certain amount of torque to the screw, it cams out, which is it takes the screwdriver head and it forces it outward, which is why there's a little concave, like little radiuses inside it that kind of force it out, which is why Phillips head screws are actually pretty easy to strip out is because they're designed to do that. That's so that in a production facility, they could just go down through with a gun and go zap, and as soon as it hits the correct amount of torque, they'd pull the gun out, and they could just move to the next one. They didn't really care about them being serviced. It's like super long, but they were concerned about being able to put a thousand screws in a day. So they designed them to specifically cam out, whereas the JIS standard screws were designed to not do that. Um, it becomes more important on the smaller diameter screws. But, I digress. Somebody mentioned that in the, one of the, in the beginning of it and I just thought we should address it because I thought that was, yes, actually that's not a very well-known thing. Uh, pretty much uh, motorcycle mechanics that work on a lot of Japanese stuff will be aware of that. Sometimes, I mean, I've worked in vintage Japanese places and stuff like that and they still don't know that. I, I've got special screwdrivers over there that are for that. I've also got special screwdrivers that and sometimes the screwdrivers themselves aren't even marked. They're just made in a different country, so they just naturally make them that shape because that's what their tools are set up to do. And they don't even know why. So, like, or you'll buy two different versions of two different years of Phillips screwdrivers from Craftsman, and then they will both also be shaped differently, so they work better in certain screws. So you end up just having to have an entire drawer of slightly different shaped screws so that as you run across oddball stuff like that, you don't strip them out on accident. So, I'm gonna grab my sealant. And I'm sure Travis is just fascinated by all of this. That's interesting. 
it's just all this knowledge that gets kind of lost. You know, the, the pre-internet days, even with the internet, I find that old people don't use the internet very well. So a lot of the old timer information, stuff like that, you know, not even necessarily a lot, lot old timer, but just slightly old timer mm -hmm. will not use the internet. So a lot of oddball information like that just doesn't get passed down, you know, because if you're a new mechanic and you're coming up, you're more than likely going to be going to a factory shop. So you're going to be working on new vehicles. You're going to get your your automotive certifications for new Audis, BMWs, Fords, Mercedes, whatever. And you're not going to really have to deal with the older cars because any new shop basically is going to refuse to work on old vehicles because they can't. It's not profitable or viable or anything like that. So you can't look it up on a spreadsheet and say, this is the amount of hours that an oil change takes on a Porsche 944 because that just doesn't matter anymore because the cars are old. So the, the information gets lost. Um, so stuff like that, like knowing that there's multiple different kinds of screwdriver tips, depending on the bike and the era, don't even get involved. Everybody kind of knows that, uh, mostly because it's made as a joke, but all the old Japanese bikes had certain kind of hardware, but they were all metric. And all the American bikes used, you know, Harleys and stuff, or hotball stuff, um, use, of course, you know, SAE standard, the Imperial system, but then you get like the British old bikes and they have their own goofy Wentworth system of measurement. It's its own nutty goddamn shit that was just awful. And everybody knows that that's the joke is like old British bikes have Lucas ignitions and Wentworth bolts. And that's why they're goddamn terrible. <laughs> um, except for the people that really like them and they really like them because they've got some sort of emotional attachment or whatever. And I'll set that there. So worth worth noting that if you did want to change that bearing, you'd use the blind hole bearing puller. Which uh, you, you could, yeah. Actually, there's enough area behind here. You can just pull the, the washer, or the washer, but the seal out and just drive it through. That's Actually, true. you don't really even have to do that because you can get these hot enough. To, again, small toaster oven 350 degrees and you could just turn it upside down and it falls out of there so uh, you don't have to even do any of that uh, it's unnecessary really and this is where so i start remembering where did i have what's what spacers went to where so we got this spacer goes there but maybe it's going to the washer there so, um sometimes i oh that actually goes to something else that is the drain swivel that's that so we got seals here we got two spacers there we got that we got i know that there's a spacer on each one of these i believe that the spacers on these are going to be roughly the same so you got the spacer on that guy spacer on that guy spacer on this guy here that is a washer that is not a spacer and that is not a shim so pretty much going to be this stuff right there um yeah they're both a little loose so you normally sometimes if you get bikes that are designed really nicely or like components that are designed really nicely they can they'll build them so that if there's three shafts like this gear reduction box they'll make each shaft a little bit different diameter so that the shims that go on each particular shaft only fit that sh that shaft and then sometimes you get ones where they just didn't care so and then all the shafts are the same and you just have to figure it out so i'm trying to remember if this shim goes underneath here i believe it does so they don't, it's not going to go on the other side, so it has to go there. All right. So, without looking this up, trying to go off of referencing from my memory and not anything else, that also goes to the rear tips. That's something different. So, and we've got this. There's a there's a shim on each side of here. So this one goes down here. Right, hold on. Hold on. God damn it. I'm trying to remember. So. Each one of these little shims should fall down inside one of the little holes. So that might be their trick. Nah, they're all the same. All right, never mind. So you can put this shaft on here. Not much to it, you know, it just kind of sits in there. Um, this is, this goes down here like this. And this is specifically so that this spring, if you can put this on here either way, it doesn't locate. It's dished like this so that it locates. So you just put that down on there like that, it slides in there. And the little cutouts on that are just so it can simply go past the splines. And you push that out and then there's going to be a, an open flat spot and you can usually see the little wear mark around the outside of that tells you which orientation it goes and this side also is it, it locates around there because it's not going to locate around there so 
and then click on it. And then you just simply compress that on there. And this spring's really, really lightweight. Um, they do make a, and this is the part of this transmission that allows you to go into pedal mode. We're gonna keep pedal mode on this bike. Um, I thought about, go down on there, uh, disengaging it for the bike, but I also realized that if we need pedal mode on the side of the road, it's gonna be really important. So just rotate that so that it locks in place and you can drop the rest of the stuff down in there really easily. Um, and then make sure your shim's down in there and you can drop this down on there. Rotate it a little bit until the gears line up. And these are uh, angle cut gears, helical cut. I don't know if they're exactly helical cut, they're angle cut at least. And the other ones are center cut, they're straight cut gears. So just rotate them until it lines up all the way. Nice. Um, then you've got one more seal on the other side. It just goes again around the outside of here. Um, it's gonna take a little bit of this. And this is just, the, the tr this case does not build up pressure. It's simply just a gear reduction box. Um, there's not a lot to it. They recommend like 80, 90 weight high point gear oil or um, some sort of, uh, no, 90 weight high point gear oil. If you really want to, because it's just an oil bath, there's nothing really that contaminates it. It's just whatever is in here is in here when you first build it and whatever stuff comes off of the stuff as you use the bike. But nothing really sits inside here. It doesn't need to be changed out often and it doesn't really hold a lot of oil. Um, so if you want to, but 90 weight oil is pretty thick oil. It's very, it's very thick, very viscous oil. So if you want to and you're trying to go for maximum speed, just put zero weight oil inside of the transmission. Like as long as this stuff has oil, it doesn't destroy itself. It's really just to kind of keep everything lubricated and cold so that it doesn't overheat. If you leave oil out of this though, it does not work very well for very long. It really destroys itself quickly. So just don't do that. But yeah, if you're just trying to get maximum speed out of these bikes, you just put like zero weight and like 10 weight oil, or even just use something really goofy like fork oil. <laughs> like, like five weight fork oil because it have just enough in there plus it'll have all the the anti-foaming coagulation stuff in there and i must have accidentally set that heater too close to my tub of grease so whoops because that overheated uh -oh. my tub of grease anyways be careful about that because it makes your grease all funky um and just simply grease up the gasket i put not a whole lot to these honestly i would have liked it at the the locator pin's been on the other side, but I'll put enough grease under it stays to the side of it. And they're not press fit, any of this stuff, so it just slides together. Wow. So. Sorry about that, I had to reference the original material because I was actually gonna put this in here backwards, so slide this back out. Not backwards, but put the shim in the wrong spot. So this shim here actually does go on this side. And if you want to get really technical about it, you can look at the wear marks on the side of this shim right here. And they probably perfectly match the diameter of the wear marks on that part right there. So there you go. I'm just slide all this stuff back together. That's usually how I try to figure stuff out. Sometimes it's easy to go to reference material because it's always going to be right. So if you're not certain, especially in transmissions, just look up a manual. It's too easy these days. So just reference it. Well then, once you get that all back together and everything's held down in place, grease up your gasket. This goes on the other side. Uh -huh. So you can slide this around from the outside. Because once you get this together, it slides in from over here. Ah, uh, right. Because so, they instead of just making that spline stick out a little bit further and having that seal just connect to the spline, they made a whole separate piece with the dumb O-ring that you also had to have. Yeah, it's Instead redundant. of just making it simple, I right. don't know why, just <laughs> what they did. So, whatever. Anyways. Like I said, all this stuff just slides together. We'll put a little bit of grease on the inside of the seal here. Just, I just always kind of generally like to put oil or grease in the seal so that they slide together a little bit easier and they get lubricated when they start rotating. So, and just, just be gentle. It should just fall down on here very easily. Um, if you clean everything off, it makes everything a lot easier to work on, then just simply put your bolts there. The two long bolts, typically when you're messing around with cases and they've got alignment pins, the 
long bolts are always going to go where the alignment pins are. Um, if the original engineers aren't complete assholes, then there'll only be maybe one or two different length bolts. If you get a bike where they designed it or a car where they designed it so that each bolt was its own specific length by like five millimeters difference, that guy was an asshole and he got fired. So there. <laughs> if you get a situation like that, you just need to check. The easy way to do that is if you put all the bolts down in here and you look at them and they haven't been threaded in yet, that they all kind of have about the same. Like if you just, this is a short bolt, this is the long bolt, but if you would just drop them down in here without tightening them up, if they all stick out about the same length, which would be about five or six millimeters. Um, if they all stick out the same length, then you more than likely have all the bolts in the correct holes for the length of the bolts. If you're looking around there and you have them all dropped in there and there's like one bolt that sticks out an inch or, you know, 26 millimeters, um, then you probably need to figure out where that bolt should be or if that's even the correct bolt or if it's dropped in all the way or whatever, but just kind of a quick rule of thumb for that sort of thing. That way you're not trying to, and gasket services, just go around in a pattern. If you don't know what the pattern is, just kind of make one up, it's roughly starish pattern ish. So, and these are just six millimeter bolts, so I can't imagine they're more than like seven or eight foot pounds of torque, which is not going to be a lot. So, basically, don't over tighten them, but make sure they're snug and then tighten down a little bit. So, not don't have to be wrenched on here as hard as possible. That actually is bad because when you have gasket surfaces, it tends to crush the gasket and causes it to leak. What you want is a nice even pressure around the gasket sealing surface so that it doesn't have any issues. And then this is our pretty fill. factory yeah. fill bolt with the factory yellow dab paint on there to let you know, it was probably some sort of factory marker saying that we did put oil in this one, put a yellow mark on it. Right. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of checks and balances and stuff like that. We're not going to tighten it down because I got to put oil in it later. And then I'm just going to grease this guy up real good. And I got a seal in here. We did not put a new O ring in here. I don't, we, it's probably fine, honestly. Um, if it's not fine, I will just replace it later. But because it's not hard because it's not inside the transmission. But just be careful when you're sliding it back around the outside of here because you can damage it very easily. That's why I greasing it up. <laughs> and that's all you have to do. And that's, you know, rebuilding the transmission hub for a Honda Hobbit. Not too big of a deal.